Brooke Pryor, ESPN. Jack, I think you said last night that you probably weren't going to check your phone. You turn it off multiple hours before the game. But what have the last, I mean, 20 or so hours been like for you? How do you stay locked in with all of the, I mean, March Madness happening? Yeah, it's it's definitely been crazy. Uh, when I finally did open my phone, it was, it was overwhelming, to say the least, uh, which I definitely appreciate all the support of all the people uh, sending me messages and things like that. It means a lot. But uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of just putting it all off until Sunday. Um, I, I really want to win this next game, and I know my guys do as well. So I just got to kind of put it away and, and, and forget about my phone for the next 48 hours, and then we'll take care of it. Back left. Jack Wilgraves, Associated Press. I did some calling around about you this morning. I talked to Coach Tharp. I talked to, to Kevin. How difficult was the decision to leave? I, they said that you had exhausted your options academically. And they said that you came to them almost like asking for permission in a way to leave. How difficult was it? And, and what are you what what are you studying this year? Yeah, so I got my accounting undergrad at Hillsdale, and I'm doing my master's of business uh, right now. Uh, so I'll be done with that this summer. And it was it was really tough. Uh, you're kind of they're right. I was kind of asking for their permission, even though they were very gracious and they weren't going to say no or anything like that. But um, I loved my time at Hillsdale. It was amazing. Five amazing years. Um, obviously different than this. This is really, really awesome too. But um, I made some tremendous relationships with the coaches and players, some of my best friends. Um, so I can't say enough good things about them. So I, I didn't really want to leave, but um, they don't have graduate school programs for uh, business-related stuff. And I knew I wanted to do that in my, uh, in my future. And I knew I wanted to keep playing basketball and challenge myself at the next level. So it made too much sense not to try to jump up to Division One here. And, and everything has, has worked out pretty well so far. Front right. Uh, Jeff and I work from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Jack, I'm not sure what the last six months maybe looked like, but if, have you had any random or weird NIL offers in the last 12 hours or so? And what did those look like? Um, to be honest, I've, I've definitely gotten a lot of messages. But I haven't. I just haven't been able to comb through them. And um, like, I, yeah, I want to make money. I want to go through them. But um, I care more about winning the next game. So, like I said, hopefully those opportunities will still be there on Sunday, and I can I can figure that out. But to be honest, for now, I've I've only looked at like one or two things. Left middle. I mean, kind of along those lines, what has the most surreal moment been of, you know, since the game, and I know you were on the McAfee show this morning, but of all those things, what kind of jumps out as, wow, I can't believe this is happening? Uh, it, was, it was probably being on SVP late night. That was really cool, uh, going on with Coach Campy, and uh, I got back to the hotel. It was pretty late, and I turned on the TV, and then I was like, oh, I guess I'll check ESPN right now. And and I saw myself on Scott Van Pelt. So that was that was pretty cool. It's a show I feel like a lot of people grew up watching and, and seeing him uh, talk about his sports takes. So, so that was something that was really cool. Front left. Guys, Tony Paul, Detroit News. Um, Greg, uh, Greg Campy called the play of the game, the rocket watch pass to, to you, DQ. I'm just curious, both of you, um, what you thought of that play. He could have gone to the lane, dr taken a shot himself. He's taken on a different role this year. His career hasn't necessarily gone how he hoped. What do you make of what he means to this team and that play in particular? What does that show about him? DQ, can you start? Uh, definitely. Uh, Rock is just, he's been, he's taken everything in since the beginning of the year. No matter what's been thrown at him, he's been ready for whatever task coach throws at him, whatever, if that's scoring, if that's just coming in, getting a game when it stopped. That's getting a game when a rebound rocket hasn't he hasn't budged. He's been he's been a great teammate, a great player all year for us. So we 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 expected that out of him. And I was just deep corner. Uh Rob reached and Rocket made the right play. And he believed in me. Everybody on the bench believed in me. All the guys believed in me. I knew I could knock it down. So uh shout out to Rocket for making that pass for me. Yeah, yeah I just want just wanna add to that. Uh Rocket's my roommate this year, so we've, we've been through a lot together and uh, just can't say enough good things about him. Like you said, he's, uh, he's had a windy road, as it have a lot of us in our basketball careers on this team, but he shows up every day to work. He, uh, he does what's asked of him, and he always makes the right play. So he's just another uh, tremendous part of our team. Questions for our student athletes? Left middle. Jack, the, the official attendance for Hillsdale's regional final last year was 117. 
and there were 18,000 people here watching you last night. As a competitor, was there any difference as a basketball player? And did you sort of realize and embrace maybe the immensity of the stage? Uh, one, it's kind of one of those things like once you're out there on the court, you don't, at me personally, I don't really notice what's going on around me. And I think that's important as players. I don't think any of us really notice too much about what's going on. But I will say that yesterday was the first time ever in my career that, especially in the first half towards the end, I noticed like if I caught the ball, like I could just hear the crowd like kind of co collect their breath. And that I had never noticed that on the court, anything like that, just hearing that big of a crowd, that type of thing go on. That was kind of cool, but also just a surreal experience of everyone's kind of on edge of their seat whenever I touch the ball. Front right. I, I can tell based on the way you've answered most of these questions that you haven't thought about this yet. But <laughs> you're, I don't know where basketball ends up taking you in the future, either of you. But have you thought about at all what maybe it, the future will look like when, when you look back you, that you, you had these moments and, and, and you, were, you knocked off Kentucky and, and made people start questioning a lot of things about Kentucky, and it was you guys who did all that. Yeah, I think, uh, and we've, we've talked about this with Coach Campy. I think when I think about it right now, the thing that I'm most excited about and this is because of my time at Hillsdale. I, I go back to Hillsdale once or twice, and I'm excited to see my guys. I can't wait to come back and see all these guys in five, ten years, however many years it is, and talk about these memories that we're making right now. And that's why we want to keep making more of them, because we know we're going to get together down the road, and it's going to be just such a fun experience to reminisce. DQ, you want to add to that? Uh, definitely. Uh, just being on this team, ever since we went to Italy, it's just been, it's just been love. It's like... I, I I would say love at first sight. It was like we went to Italy and it was just we hit it off from there. Everybody on the team loved each other, and we got this we got this saying between the players is like we'll die for each other. So it's like anything, whether it's defensive slides, free throw at the end of practice, we may have to run sprints, whatever it is, we're all going hard and we're all willing to die for each other. And we we take that out on the court and it shows. Left aisle. Uh, Jack, Jerry DePaula, Tri Trip Total Media uh, in Pittsburgh. I was wondering, I was do, walk, looked at the stats this morning. I was wondering, is it written in your scholarship you're not allowed to shoot two pointers, only threes? <laughs> uh, no, it's not in my scholarship. Coach Campy might uh, tell me to stay out of the paint if there's some big, uh, big guys down there. But I, I've said it a couple times, but I, I told my teammates I used to shoot twos in the past, but they don't believe me. So. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to change that, but <laughs> I'm, I'm just playing my role, man. The coach does a great job putting us in positions to succeed, and if I play my role, then I know my guys are going to play theirs. Front right. Uh, question for DQ Cole. Obviously, Jack made a ton of threes. Oh, Neil Rule with Oakland Media, by the way. Uh, Jack made a ton of threes. You made the three uh, that, that really put the game away. But DQ, no one's going to talk about you. had eight rebounds yesterday. Rebounding from the guard spot, it's something that you've done all season long for this Oakland team against a huge backcourt with Kentucky. Where does that come from? Where does where does that where does that dog in you come from? Because rebounding is a want to proposition. Uh, honestly, it's just it's just my my natural instinct. Ever since I was a kid, I always I was the smallest, the most unathletic, so I had to make a way to get rebounds. I always wanted the ball. I knew I had to rebound. I knew I had a skill when I was younger. I just didn't I didn't have the work ethic. I didn't know what it took, and just working up, working my way up, I learned that. I can if I can affect the game in any way that it, it it'll help our team out. So ever since middle school, I can say I just been a, a, a great rebounder. I just a ball tracker. Got to get this rebound. Got to get every rebound. Any rebound that I can get, I got to get it. Especially in big situations like this, March Madness. We need those rebounds to to get good wins against good teams. So. And then a quick follow up to that. How does this feel for you being from Pontiac? You know, you can practically walk to, to Oakland's campus from Pontiac. How does this feel for you to be doing this on this stage? Oh, it's crazy. It's a dream come true every day. It's just been, I'm learning new stuff every day. I'm seeing stuff I've never seen before. Jack Goki, I've never seen that before. I, ever in my life, I've, I've shot with good shooters, but this is by far the greatest shooter I ever shot with. And it's just been surreal, just taking in every moment I can and just just going with the flow, just enjoying it. Left aisle. 
Cameron Hoover, Pittsburgh Post Gazette. This is a question for you, DQ. DQ. Uh, just kind of being around this guy all season long, what is it sort of like for you and the guys in the locker room now that he's kind of becoming this overnight celebrity from his performance <laughs> last night? Uh, it's crazy. Uh, some of the guys, me and some of the guys, were up late last night. Just we were just going, we were just on his uh, his Instagram, and we were just watching how many followers he just people just following. He had Antonio Brown and. Famous people just they just in disbelief. It was just amazing to see. But uh, like I said, we all knew this all along. Uh, we've been we've been believing in him since Italy. We know he can shoot the ball. Shoot the ball. We know that he can make any shot out there on the court. So we believe in him. He believes in us, and we're gonna continue to believe in him. And he's gonna continue to believe in us. Left middle. Jack, one quick one. I know you're from Pewaukee. Do you know the Watt family? Or is that, I know that's a decently small area, and what are the odds that the Watt family and you're from there, do you guys have any kind of relationship? Uh, the closest I have is, is uh, like, my mentor growing up. Uh, he's, like, best friends with J.J. Watt. So I've, like, met him once or twice, but I wouldn't say I, he really, like, knows who I am or I really know who he is. But uh, he's obviously a legend from Pewaukee and uh, Wisconsin in general. So... Uh, it's pretty cool to see like a shout out from him. And then DQ, a couple of days ago, Campy was saying that if you guys won the first game, it would change your lives. It would change his life, Oakland's life. We kind of know how it's starting to change Jack's. How for you are you kind of wrapping your mind around a, a life changing win like that? Uh, I'm still kind of, I'm still kind of, my drum was still kind of pumping. I mean, it was it was crazy just to be out there, be even being on the bench. Like everybody on the bench was in shock. It was it was something we knew we could do. It wasn't uh, like we just got lucky or anything like that. I would say we we prepared for it. Uh, we all believed in each other, and we went out there and we got the job done. But for me, I would say it was just just coming from JUCO. Uh, it was just it was it's been a long road so it was just it just felt good to maybe get the biggest win of my life hopefully i can get more to come right middle nathan geese you would say today this one's kind of for both you uh, life in the mid-major you guys don't win that conference tournament you're not here right now and all of this isn't happening how do you guys kind of handle and go about your business in that first four months to even get to this point where the second you lose it's just done uh, it's all about just preparation, and uh, Coach Campy just preached, especially during the regular season, it's just stacking hurdles. Um, we had 20 regular season hurdles in the Horizon League, and he just said we had to stack one more than the team, than the next team, and we got 15. I think the next team had 14 or 13, so, so we got that one seed, and that helped us out in the conference tournament, and then once we got to the conference tournament, it was just all about seize the moment like we're trying to do here, and and give ourselves that opportunity to come and make history. Uh, so it's, it's just the preparation of the whole year, I would say. DQ, you want to add to that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I just think uh, ever since we came in, like I said, our first meeting, it's just been everybody's all in. Nobody's not bought into the system that Co Coach Campy has, Coach Bobby, Coach Cub, they all, Coach Smitty, they all put a great, a great game plan together every day. And we and we execute. We go out there. We we lock in, and we and we make sure that we're ready for what for what's thrown at us. Because we see a lot of different things out there, and people get confused with our defense. So we have to we have to be able to stay on top, and and contain. Left middle, Jack. You know you hit the fifth three last night. You stick your tongue out. You hit the sixth three. You do the Jordan shrug. You get the last rebound. You're screaming. And then you come in here and you're like, oh, hey, how's it going? No big deal. <laughs> Is there a Jekyll and Hyde thing? I mean, what happens when you get on the floor that maybe it's totally runs in what contrast to what it seems like you are off the floor? Uh, I think that's a good way to describe it. I've never thought of it that way, but Jekyll and Hyde is definitely a good, uh, good way to put it. Um, I try to just be as humble as I can off the court and – all this attention, it's its really cool, don't get me wrong, but it's its definitely weird for me. Like like we all know, coming from Division II, I've, I haven't seen anything like this before. Um, but once I step on the floor, it's its just a whole different mentality of I'm just trying to go out there and and uh, just make the opponent feel my presence, to be honest. And uh, I didn't used to honestly be that, that emotional of a player on the court, but I, I guess I've just developed that in the last couple of years just because of my passion for the game. and and how much I love being out there with my teammates. I'm just trying to soak it all in. And um, 
I'm sure all of you know I'm pretty old and, and a seasoned veteran in college basketball, so I know I don't have a ton of time left uh, for this specific stage. I obviously want to play pro, but just trying to take advantage of all these moments man, and, uh, and appreciate it, really. we got time for two more. Back right. Yeah, Rob McLean with Inside Pack Sports. Uh, obviously, NC State, they're kind of on a magic carpet ride like you guys are. I just would like from both of you, if you don't mind, your thoughts on the Wolfpack, which you've seen over the last uh, 24 hours. Dick, you want to start? Uh, they're a pretty good team. They're, uh, they got some big, solid guys inside. The guard, the guard play is pretty decent. Uh, but I know, um, I know our coaches, our coaching staff will put a good, put together a good game plan to to stop or at least limit uh, most of their most of their good players and try to get them to miss some shots. And we're gonna we're gonna hope we keep hitting shots and moving up. Jack. Yeah. Um, we, we watched our film today, and, and uh, I know us as players will watch some more film tonight. But, uh, I mean, just seeing, seeing Burns, how, how much of a force he is, we just obviously got to limit his touches, especially deep in the paint, because he's going to kill us if he catches the ball down there. And uh, Horn's a, a terrific player, too. So we, gotta, we still need to study up a little bit more on kind of tendencies and things like that. But we've, we've put in our, our game plan with our zone. We know. Uh, kind of what spots on the floor we need to attack when when they have the ball and and kind of what their weak spots are. So uh, it's just going to come down to executing the game plan. I think whichever team does that best is is going to come out victorious. All right, last question, front and left. Brock Heilig with the Oakland Post, guys. Could you just talk about what a Sweet 16 appearance would mean for you guys as players, Campy as the coach, and the program in general? Dick, you want to start? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it'll be crazy not only for uh, for our basketball careers. But for obviously for Coach Campy's career, uh, and then I think we I think we all deserve it. Coach Campy Coach Campy believes in us. He's been believing in us, and we all believe we deserve it. So once, like Jack said yesterday, if we win, it won't be a surprise to us because we we've prepared for this ever since our non-conference schedule way back in November, October. So yeah, uh, it'll be it'll be a great feeling. Jack. Yeah, we're we're super excited for the opportunity, and uh, like DQ said, uh, us as players, we want to go out and get it for the guy next to us and for Coach Campy, uh, because we know how much time and effort he's put into Oakland University, and and he deserves it more than anyone. But also just the school and the amount of support we've gotten as a team this year has been really cool to see, and uh, a lot of us like DQ coming from JUCO, me from Division Two, other guys from JUCO, things like that. Uh, we didn't have that type of stuff necessarily at our other schools. So getting that kind of love and, and hoping we can reciprocate it with a, something special like a trip to the Sweet 16, it would be really awesome. Cameron Hoover, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Uh, Coach, last night after the game, Jack kind of said, he joked and said something along the lines of, I took some threes maybe I shouldn't have, and you just kind of laughed and shook your head. Uh, do you disagree with that statement? And also kind of what is it as a coach that lets you sort of let a player like that play with that kind of freedom to shoot as often as he does? I 100% disagree with it. He hasn't taken a bad shot in of his 380 that he's taken. And what makes a coach do that is probably stupidity. Um, you know, I, I've i always, on my best teams over the the Division One years, in the Division Two days, that's all we had was shooters. In the Division One days, you know, you can't win that way. Um, so we always wanted to have two, and one had to be unconscious shooter. And the reason they had to be an unconscious shooter is because my best players are always our post players. You know, I had a score at the basket type guys. So how do you keep those guys from being doubled? You have a guy out there that's unconscious that will shoot anything that by the end of that game, Kentucky had three guys on him. And all of a sudden, Trey Townsend goes from four points at halftime to 17. And if he'd have made his free throws like he normally, I mean, he's a 80% free throw shooter that went four for nine. So he, he you know, he would add over 20 points. And, and that just opens it up. And as much as I love the three, our offense's philosophy is the three is third. The first is layups, the second is free throws, and the third is threes. We don't want to take twos. We want to take layups, free throws, and threes. So to do that, if I can have a guy that's an unconscious guy that people think he's nuts, and you know, and they think Gokey's that. I mean, they, they think he'll shoot any shot any way, and he does, and he makes them. He can go miss four in a row, and I've seen him do that, and I've seen him make four in a row. 
So, yes, I want him shooting it every time. He can't take a bad shot. Now, have I said to him, did we really need that one? Yeah, but he knows, you know, if he doesn't take one, I'm going to scream at him. Left middle. Brooke Pryor, ESPN. Greg, you have been doing this a long time, but in the last 18 Why hours, I know I'm so sorry. do we have to keep so bringing sorry. all that up, man? Just, you know, context. 40 years. For, 40 years. In the last 20, 18 hours, have you experienced anything that you've never experienced in your career before? Any, any kind of surreal moments, pinch me moments in the last little bit? Um, the rush of media, um, kind of like this. I mean, this is different because it's Kentucky on the biggest stage. But our first trip to the NSA tournament in 2005, we were we went into the league tournament as the seven seed, maybe the one of the worst seasons a co team I've ever coached had. We were nine and 17 or something like that. And uh, we went and we won our conference tournament. We're going to the NSA tournament for the first time. And when the airplane landed um, to get back to Detroit, in those days you could get by, you know, the media could go anywhere. There was no TSA in that. And we get off the plane, and we're walking, and there's this barricade and all these cameras and all these people. And I said to my assistant, oh, my God, what happened at the airport? And it was all for us. And I was like, we were dumbfounded by it. I'd never been in anything like that. And as an assistant, I'd been to the Sweet 16 with Toledo, so you know, I never had seen anything like that. This is parallel to that. I mean, I, I have not been asleep yet. I have not been to bed. And I have not been, I've not stopped talking. You know, I mean, I, I, I like to talk. I talk a lot, but it's getting ridiculous. You know, I mean, every 15 minutes I've got a Zoom or something. And, but it's really cool and it's great for Oakland. You know, this is, this is just unbelievable for our university, the amount of publicity. And, and because our kids are such great kids, it's positive publicity. Front left. Greg, Tony Paul, Detroit News. Um, Rocket Watts. You said that pass was the play of the game to DQ Cole in the corner. Uh, I'm just curious, can you kind of explain a little bit about what he means to this team and where he's come from, given that this kid started out as a big-time prospect at Michigan State and he came to ended up at Oakland taking on a completely different role? What does he mean to this team? And can you take us through that specific play? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a hell of a question because we don't win last night without him. He didn't play in the conference tournament because of injury. He's been beset with injuries in his two years at Oakland. Um, you know, I know he's disappointed in that the trajectory of his career, you know, looked like an NBA one and done and all that kind of stuff. And now he's, you know, a, a really important role player. But he could be an important role player on a team that does something special. So. You know, maybe the tra trajectory isn't as bad as he thinks. And he's accepted it, and he's an unbelievable teammate. Um, the players love him. I heard Golke at a press conference talking, not here, but maybe it was the league tournament or it was somewhere that he's talking. You know what? It was senior night. And he was telling everybody how he was telling all his people at Hillsdale that he's rooming with Rocket Watts, and everybody thought that was the you know unbelievable. You're rooming with Rocket Watts. So... You know, he's just a great kid that everybody loves, and uh, last night was a special moment for him. I mean, he, he got to the rim and made some big baskets for us when we weren't struggling. And then, you know, a, a selfish player that thinks they're really, really good and should shine in the moment would have shot a falling down shot there, and instead he found DQ in the corner for maybe the biggest basket in Oakland history. Right front. Yeah, hey, Greg, Tony Garcia, Detroit Free Press. Uh, you say you haven't slept yet. I'm just checking if that's literally or figuratively. And also, when you have all this going on, right, how do you sort of set the tone that, I guess, 27 hours from now? Because uh, you said yesterday that wasn't a fluke, right? This isn't just some Cinderella that popped off one day. You guys want to make a run. So how do you dial, that, dial back in with all this going on? Well, it's easy, you know, because of how important it is. And, and we know what's going on. I mean, I yeah, I haven't. I haven't been in bed. I haven't slept. I, I got a job. I got, you know, this is, this is, I mean, this is the most important time of the year in this job. And I'm lucky that, what are there, 32 teams left in the country doing it? And there's 360 coaches. And so 300 coaches aren't doing this. So I better do it and I better do it well. I own it. I owe our players that. I will say this, though. I, 
between two and four in the morning, I spent that those two hours returning text messages because they can't return them at that time. You know, you, you have 1,300 text messages and you do it in the middle of the afternoon, then they answer and then you've got to put a thumbs up or a heart on it, you know. And that's now it becomes 2,600 text messages. So I did that at three in the morning so that those people wouldn't, you know, I didn't want to keep answering text messages. And I got it down from 1,300, I got it down to about 195. Now it's back up to 495. So, you know, I got to, uh, tonight I'll be up at 2 o'clock in the morning doing the rest of them. Left aisle. Uh, Jerry DePaul, Pittsburgh Trib. In this day and age, Coach, how does a guy stay at one school for 40 years? Stupidity, uh, a, great, a great athletic director, a president. You know, people that, you know, put up with you. Uh, nobody else wants you. I mean, uh, there's a lot of answers to that. I, I, five became 10, 10 became 20, and now it's 40, and everybody brings it up. You know, I'm trying to low-key that, you know. I, 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 I'm trying to tell people I started, I got the job when I was 18. You know, the, the, I don't know, man. I, I know this. Uh, I have a unique situation a unique love for a university that's accepted me i grew up with the university we went from 9,000 students when i got there to 20 we went from a thousand on campus to almost 5,000 on campus it's a there's been a crane on our campus every year but the covid year that i've been there it's grown it's an unbelievable campus an unbelievable university and it's getting the the do that it needs now i mean people are talking our web our university website crashed last night it crashed i mean that's what this does. We also sold eight thousand dollars worth of T-shirts to Louisville last night. Think about that. <laughs> Honest to God. You know that they they buy the T-shirts and they put the credit card in Louisville, Louisville, Louisville. It wasn't the same person. So I don't know. Next year when Louisville and Kentucky play, I don't know if everybody's going to show up in an Oakland shirt or what. I have no idea. But it's crazy to think about what something like this does. Right aisle. Yeah, Rob McLean with Inside Pack Sports. I know you haven't had a lot of time, but what have you seen studying NC State and uh, what threats, I guess, do they pose? I've looked at every possession this season that they've played against zone. So not a lot of teams play zone, so that's good. Because otherwise, it, I'd be up three nights, I guess. Um, it's going to be a completely different game plan than we had against Kentucky. At Kentucky, we wanted them to catch the ball at 10 or 12 feet. We wanted them shooting from 10 or 12 feet. We didn't want them shooting threes. We did a great job of that until the last two or three minutes. Um, tomorrow night, we can't let that, the big dude get in there and catch the ball at 10 or 12 feet. Otherwise, I might have three guys with broken bodies before the, you know, the game's over. Um, so the game plan is going to be completely different. And the great thing about our zone is there's only so much you can do against the zone. You know, it's like if you're going to play Oakland, we've got 77 set plays. You know, how many of those are you going to prepare for in one day? Against when you play zone, they can only do a few things, and we've seen it all. So we, we, we think we know what they're going to do. It's more of a personnel scout. All right, what does this guy do? We can't give him this. This guy only goes left. If he goes right, he's pulling up. If he goes left, he's going all the way. You know, all those things. My staff watched all their games. I only cared about the zone. They're putting that together, you know, the personnel. And I got an unbelievable staff that does a great job. I think we're very well prepared, and I think we'll be able to guard them. Uh, it's going to come down to what team makes shots and, and you know, who makes the plays that, when it counts. Front left. Yesterday you talked a lot, of, or before yesterday, you talked a lot about slowing the game down against Kentucky. Um, there were points in the game where it looked like you wanted to run on the court and grab your players to slow them down yourself. Um, does that change tomorrow? You you expect a more fast-paced game? You expect to let them go? It's going to be a complete opposite game plan, and the reason is um, they're playing their seventh game in 11 days. Who does that? I mean, the pros don't even do that, right? But because they're in a league with 400 teams, they had to win five games to uh, to win their league championship. So they'd play five games in five days and turn around three days later and play and then, you know, two days after that, play again. So what do we got to do? If we're smart, we're going to play fast, right? We want to we wanna make them run. That big dude's big, right? And they got a lot of big dudes. We want to make them run. And uh, 
at some point they're human, aren't they? I mean, at some point it's got to kick in seven games in 11 days. So, you know, if we can keep the pressure up and we get them to the point that their legs are tired, you know, it's hard to make jump shots when your legs are tired. So, and, and to beat a zone, you got to make jump shots. Probably got time for one more question. Questions for Coach, right here. Last question, left middle. Uh, Coach, uh, would you be in favor of a video review component at the end of games in terms of fouls and stuff like that? Say that again. Would you be, you know, based on what happened at the end of the Kansas game last night, I don't know if you saw it, I know you were busy. Uh, would you be, there was a call at the rim that went against Sanford. Uh -huh. Would you be interested in some sort of NBA type model where you're able to challenge a call or it's calls in certain situations are up for review? If I were them, I would say yes, obviously. If it happened to me, I would say yes. But, you know, man, we got way too many reviews as it is. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's almost a coaching strategy to ask for things so that you can get rest or you, you don't waste the time out so you can get your guys together. And I'd hate to see the game even slow down more. I think one of the problems with our game is the last three minutes take so long. Um, as a coach, I want it to take that long. But as a fan, I don't think I would. So to answer your question, I would say no, I'd probably not be in favor of it. But I feel bad, f you know. I'm a Detroit Tiger fan, right? And Armando Garb, whatever his name was, lost his perfect game because Jim Joyce made a bad call at first that today it would have been a perfect game. So, you know, and Jim Joyce, the umpire, said it when he, before he died, the worst thing that ever happened to him in his career. Well, that referee probably feels the same way last night, right? So, I mean, it's, it's the human side of our sport, and I don't want to see that changed. Coach, i gotta, I got to ask about your hat. Is there any significance with that? Is it your favorite hat? You wear it all year round? Or? It's a brand called Live Lucky. Okay. And God, I need to live lucky right now, right? So I wear these Live Lucky hats, hoping it rubs off. And, you know, your brain's right there, so maybe it sneaks in a little bit. <laughs> Gotcha. It, no, that's not Notre Dame, if that's what you were thinking. I had somebody ask me that. Is that Notre Dame? And I said, who? 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 All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate All right. it. Thanks, everyone. Guys, uh, Will Graves, Associated Press. I guess this question's probably for Ben and maybe Mo. What is it like to have to guard DJ in practice? Ben, you want to start? Uh, I mean, I can definitely say it's, it's, uh, it comes with some challenges for sure. Uh, but I mean, I think at the end of the day, it definitely makes us better. I mean, I don't think there's another another post presence um, in the ACC, really in the country, that says as as much of a force as him. So I think it really, honestly, has made us uh, part of the players that we are today, having to go against that every day. Mo, you want to add to that? It's easy. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm playing. Uh, yeah, we we compete against each other every day, and DJ is a tough guy, and like we make for him complicated to get his spot. That's why he gets so well right now in, on a on a block. Just as a follow-up, are yeah. there positions in prep where he gets you guys in practice and you just know as you're guarding him, like, I'm in big trouble here? Go ahead. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say all that. I mean, uh, but I mean, it, de yeah, it definitely, you definitely know if, if, if you're, if you're, if we're going at each other in practice, you're going to have a little soreness in your chest after having to take all them, them <laughs> post dribbles. But, but I, I don't know if I ever feel like I'm in trouble when I'm in there necessarily. Oh, same for me. <laughs> exactly the same thing. All right, questions for our student athletes. Right aisle. Just wonder, I'm Rob McGlam with Inside Pack Sports. Just wondering if you guys, what in your study session so far, what have you seen from their zone defense and what have you seen from them offensively? Mike, you want to start? Work your way down? Yeah, I think uh, from offensively, obviously, you've seen how they played against Kentucky. They're a very talented team. They can score from each level of the court. Obviously, they can shoot really well from three. They have a few guys that can really get it going. And they also have very good post presence. So, uh, just kind of today, still watching film, game plan, and seeing how we're going to approach it and tack. Uh, for, from a defensive standpoint, it's going to be huge because if we let them get going, um, it, it's going to be tough to get the win. Mo? Uh, yeah, uh, we're going to play against some zone, like maybe 80, 98 time on this time, I bet. And uh, yeah, we're going to be prepared for this game and we're going to be stay locked in and did what you do. 
Ben? Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, mean, I definitely got to agree with, with what they said. Uh, I mean, they're, they're a very solid team. I mean, obviously, they just had a, a great game the other night. Uh, I mean, they do, they do run that zone, uh, which we we're going to have to be ready for. Uh, but I mean, I feel like we do what we do, and we keep on playing like we've been playing. We'll, we'll look good out there. Left middle. Brooke Pryor, ESPN. Michael, when you look at having to potentially guard a guy like Jack Golke, who just went off the other night, what are the challenges that come with guarding and preparing for a guy that gets on a hot streak? And what's it like to watch that film and kind of see the, all the attention that he's gotten nationally? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely impressive. He's obviously a very good player. It's not like he hasn't been doing this or making these shots all year. He's, he's just very talented. So uh, going into the game, I mean, we just got to – same game plan is what the coaches think we got to do to take away obviously his looks and not let him get a clean looks if anything because he's going to get shots off like we said he's a great player and this is what he does um so trying to limit his touches limit his looks and that you know that area of the game will be huge for us and you know just try to force him to take tough ones and then finish possessions with rebounds left aisle thank you um jerry DePaulo, pittsburgh trip uh you guys uh you know, maybe all three of you can answer this question you get, this will be your seventh game in 12 days tomorrow night. How are you able to do it? Aren't you exhausted? And you've been, you haven't been home for too much to, to settle down, have you? Ben, you want to start working way down? Uh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, we definitely. I mean, I don't know about fatigue. <laughs> we've we've been hearing about fatigue for for a long time now. We've had. He said we have played a lot of games. I mean, I don't, I don't I don't see any of my guys getting tired. I don't feel like we've we've missed lost a step at all. I mean, as far as I mean, I definitely. I definitely do miss home a little bit, miss my dog a little bit, but uh, but uh, I mean, I'm I'm still trying to win some more games. Mo, oh yeah, we tired, but we got to compete. Like we got to stay on top of what we got to do because we're here for that, and we got we can't complain about like we tired. Oh, we got to play like seven games in twelve days. I don't know, but yeah, we gonna stay on top and. Yeah, I think. Oh, sorry. At the end of the day, too. Obviously, we have a common goal in mind to keep playing, keep playing the game, so in the season to finish the season with a win. So at this point, you know, even if your body's hurt or you're tired, you're not really focusing on it too much because you want to do everything you can to win that next game. Right middle. Nathan, USA Today. Michael, you guys have quite a few graduate players like yourself, quite a few guys coming in from different schools to make up this team. How much of this run is kind of the benefactor of? so many different experiences coming together to know how to handle yourself in different situations. Yeah, I think I think it's been huge that we have a, a team full of mature guys, guys that have been here, whether it played in March before or they just, just had experience playing through a lot of games where, you know, they're coming to the end where it's a one shot, one possession game and things like that. So I think just experience is always going to help you out down the stretch, especially when things aren't going your way. You can have guys that are able to rely on what they've been doing or what they've experienced in the past with either the other teams or this team they've been with for, with for a while. Um, just definitely helps keep everyone together and keep everyone on the same common goal. Questions for student athletes. Right aisle. For everyone, obviously this has generated a lot of enthusiasm back home in Raleigh. Um, now it's starting to become national. I mean, your take on that, how surreal is it to see NC State, they're calling you guys America's team and things like that, and the love that you're receiving, both from Wolfpack Nation and now from the nation itself. Ben, you want to start? Uh, I mean, I would say, especially, I mean, back home at Raleigh, I mean, that fan, the fans' appreciation back there definitely, I mean, means the world to us. I mean, we definitely feel that. I mean, when the crowd gets loud and starts cheering for us and we're away from home, I mean, there's not a better feeling than that. I mean, I know DJ Burns when he gets the ball and the crowd just turns up for him, and there's nothing more fun than that, just seeing it. I mean, I know it's fun when it's on the court. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, hopefully, I mean, as far as America's team, I mean, I guess we'll try and keep that going. Mo? Yeah, we would really appreciate that because we need that. We need that. Like, we talk about we tower, but when we got a, the chair, like, screaming for everybody, for, for us, for DJ Burns, like, we need, they give us energy, and we really appreciate it. Yeah, building off of what they said, I, I think it's huge just since we're not on our home court right now, we have a lot of fans that are traveling, and then just other, other fans that aren't NC State fans necessarily still cheering for us. So I think when you're at these neutral sites and you have fans, a fan base there for you and getting excited, it helps. You know, when you go on a run, it helps, just helps you keep it going, and then things aren't going well, they help get you back in the game. Left middle. 
Oakland was pretty clear last night that they don't want to be considered a Cinderella team, that they believe that they can beat anybody. <clears throat> Do you guys feel like you're a Cinderella team? And is tomorrow night's game almost a battle of would-be Cinderella teams that could make a run in this tournament? Mike, you want to take that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like what people have been asking us, too, is how we feel about being the underdog or lower seed in all the games. But we don't really focus on that because at the end of the day, like, we, we, we just focus on what we can control. And whoever the opponent is, we're just going to, you know, scout for them. So I don't necessarily know if we, you know, want to just be labeled as a Cinderella team. I think we just want to be labeled as a great team that goes out there and competes every day and, you know, gives it their all. Because at the end of the day, everyone in this tournament's great. I mean, the seeds can go flip back and forth. So we don't really focus on the number of the seed or anything like that. We just focus on whoever we're playing and then just control what we can control. Back right. Luke Taylor, Full Court Press Podcast. What would you say the song that best describes DJ Burns is? Ben, you want to take that? Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't got nothing. No. All right, no, hey, Mo, it's on you, man. You got this one, Mo. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, I would say Baby Chong, oh. King of the Galaxy, Ooh, I think. That's a, a good one. He loved that song. I like it. <laughs> All right, any more questions? All right, back right. I have no idea. Uh, Gary, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Gary Hahn with the Wolfpack Sports Network. Of all the challenges uh, that this team's faced in the last six games, what, what are you the most uh, proud of uh, as far as being able to, to overcome those challenges? Um, you got that. Yeah, I think, I think the biggest thing is just sticking together. Um, obviously, the season hasn't been perfect by any means. It's, you know, we haven't, we didn't win every game and, you know, blow out every team. It's like we've had some ups and downs. And I think at times we really could have easily just given in, kind of caved in to just what was going wrong and just embraced that lifestyle. But I think it was huge for us that we all kind of just banded together and no matter what we were going through, we always stuck together and had each other's backs. And I think it's, I think it's been showing on the court, at least, you know, through the ACC tournament. Even when the odds were stacked against us, it didn't really matter. We didn't really care. We were going to go in and just you know fight with your brother, and that was kind of the biggest thing. Is you want to have their back, and same way as you wanted them to have yours. So um, I think that's been huge for us going through that stretch, and even coming into this now when you're playing new teams you never played before, is just rely on what you guys have been doing all year, and just making sure you have each other's backs out there. Yeah, during the regular season, the pack had some ups and downs <clears throat> offensively. But you take a look at the last six games, all of a sudden NC State is uh, averaging 81 points. So if each of you would just give your, uh, your take on, uh, on what's happened. Ben, you want to start? Uh, for sure. I mean, I, I would say, I mean, I mean it absolutely did have a, a, a season full of ups and downs and full of a lot of adversity. And it feels like, I mean, throughout the season, I mean, again, I feel like it's something that a lot of people don't really take into consideration. But we were, I mean, when we started out this season, we had, I mean, half of our team, more than half of our team was new guys who'd never played with each other, never been on the court with each other before. And I mean, that, that takes a long time to figure out. I mean, obviously, we, we, we came out pretty hot, but I mean, we still had to kind of deal with those issues and things like that. And I feel like a, a big part of the ACC tournament was us kind of coming together, figuring those things out, kind of fixing mistakes and, and issues that, that we had had. Um, and really just kind of like, like Mike had said, come together. And I mean, I mean when, we, when we play like that and we're playing together and everything's clicking, I mean, we're a tough team to play with. You guys good? You want to add anything or you good? No. <laughs> I've got one more. Yeah, sure. <laughs> the the mental and physical toughness that you guys have uh, have displayed over the last six games has been been pretty incredible. Uh, what's what's that? Uh, what's brought that sort of to a peak? Mike, Mike, gonna take that. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think just we know. You know, this is this is it. Really, at the end of the day, when you lose, you go home. So you're kind of just. At the end of the day, you're going to go out there and give it your all. And even if things are tough, you know, you're a little banged up or your body's not feeling great or you missed the last shot or anything like that, you're not going to focus too much on it because if you get caught up with what's going wrong, next thing you know, it can all be over. So I think just trying to focus on, you know, what we do have at hand and what the opportunity we have that's in front of us is kind of something that helps you just look past everything that's going wrong or all the tough times. Right, Isle? Yeah. 
all the guys that are playing are transfers. And do you think that this season, particularly the back end when you guys are starting to succeed, is sort of a testament to saying, OK, you need to be patient with this. Sometimes it's just not going to click in the beginning. you got a lot of new guys from different systems coming to a new place. And, and this thing needs time sometimes. Do you think this is a testament to that? You got it, Mo. Benny with, or Mo, you got it? Uh, yeah. Like, like you said, we got a lot of transfer, and everybody come from different school. But we build the chemistry all year, so yeah, it take a little bit of time. But that's why right now we play so good because we know each other and we got back of each other. Brooke Pryor with ESPN. Coach, no, no introduction needed, Brooke. <laughs> What's the challenge in playing a guy like Jack Golke? I mean, obviously, all of Oakland gets really hot, but Golke specifically, how do you scheme up defense after a performance like that? You know, I was, um, I was in the locker room, and I could hear the cheering. And I will say this, I was completely wrong because I know Kentucky travels very well. And so I, I thought Kentucky was winning the game by a large margin because I kept hearing the cheering, I thought it was Kentucky fans. And um, so I got, I grabbed my phone and started looking up the score and, and obviously Oakland was winning. So when I got back, you know, last night, two, two thirty in the morning, I popped the game on, started my, you know, scouting for, to prepare, to get ready for Oakland. And man, I, I don't know that I've seen a shooting performance like that you know, if I have, it's been a long time. I mean, and, and, and people are going to say, man, goodness, Kentucky didn't do a good job. And they were there. I mean, he made shots after shots after shots. Um, I just, we, we got to do a better job. How? You know, I don't know how that is because he, he can make shots. But there's so much more um, than the shots he made. It's a really complete team. And, you know, they got great inside, outside presence, well coached, do a good job. And, and, you know, I've told our guys, man, this is going to be as tough a game as you're going to play because they, they got an inside-out presence. They can make shots. They can score around the basket. And they're unique on the defensive end. And so, you know, it's a big, it's a really big challenge. It's going to be a tough game. Left aisle. Jerry DePaula, Pittsburgh trip coach. You, know, you guys will play seven games in 12 days tomorrow night on venues that you're not used to playing on. What – is the secret to your team not getting exhausted? And how do you, how do you keep them engaged uh, for that long without falling over? You know, when you go to Chick-fil-A, they never tell you what's in those, um, those sandwiches. And it's really good. So I'm not going to give my secret away because, <laughs> no, we, our guys are, you know, it's, I'm amazed at them every game that we play. And all the credit goes to them. We, we spend a lot of time in the preseason and during the season working on our conditioning. As a matter of fact, we've also called ourselves one of the best conditioned teams in the country, if not the best. And it's really paid off for our guys mentally and physically. You know, the, the, um, the great thing about us is we've gotten stronger in every second half. And, you know, I just think the, the buy-in and the energy that we provide through our, our program and our energy that we give on the – you know, on the bench, I think it really helps our guys in understanding what the opportunity is. And there's really no secret sauce. I just think our guys are in good shape and, and mentally believe that they should be playing in the game. Front right. Michael Perchik, ABC 11 out of Raleigh. Coach, I don't know if you saw any of the videos circulating on social media of NC State students packing uh, the bell tower after last night's game. What does that type of image mean to you, understanding the rich history of this program? Well, it means a lot. I mean, I, I love our I love our students. I mean, the, our students are the best, and we have a unique thing here at NC State. When you win a huge game, you know, we like that bell tower, and everybody meets at that bell tower. It was funny. I saw one video, and it was like, "When is that? When's the light coming on? When is the light coming?" On? I thought it was great, and you know, when we win, you know, it's it's not just about our basketball team. It's about our school, and it's about our students. I mean, we. You know, we've got, we're the only team that has, you know, three 
power five teams in the same area within 25 minutes of each other. And it's a lot of bragging rights going around there. And, you know, we've had a, a long history of great basketball. And just to see us playing that well and, and obviously providing that spark for our, our entire school and our student body who has, you know, been with us at games and screaming and yelling at those games, it means a lot. Like, I don't, you know, we don't just win as a basketball program. We win as a university. Questions for Coach. Back to Brooke. Kevin, you talked a couple days ago about just the number of bids that the ACC got or lack thereof. What kind of message does it send to the committee, each win that you have and each win that, that other conference teams have in this tournament? You know, the unfortunate thing is it doesn't really send a message. I mean, I hate it because, you know, we look at the magical run that we had last year from our, some of our teams, and I think we try to – you know, tap down on that a little bit this year going into Selection Sunday, and it didn't work. Uh, I think as a as a conference, we got to figure it out. Um, what, what what really bothers me a little bit is that we put so much emphasis on the non-conference. So I, let's break our, let's break down most of our team's non-conference. Let's say you play seven Power Five and then you play four mid-majors or by games, or let's say, you know, you go six and five, at power five versus, you know, um, mid-major teams, by games. So that's 11 games. You can't tell me that that's, you know, mean, should mean more than playing 20 power five games in your league. And you got to go to home venues and away. So I think somehow we got to get out of putting more emphasis on the non-conference because it to me it appears that you can lose a bid in what you do in a non-conference opposed to how you finish. So let's use us for example. You know our non-conference was was okay. We didn't really have a the 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 major win. But look how we finished when we went to our tournament. We won five games in a row against five good teams five days in a row. Now, if we didn't put so much emphasis on it, we would have been in the tournament no matter what because the way we finished our regular season and we didn't have that opportunity. It's, you know, think about this now. You got 10 great uh, programs and great coaches that are sitting at home that didn't get a chance to go to the NCAA, and that's just not really fair. Like the ACC is, um, you know, in my opinion, I'm very biased, is the number one conference in basketball, um, and we deserve more. now. We have to do our part. If, it, if the non-conference is what it's about, then uh, as coaches, we got to win more games. Or we all have to figure out the net. And you know, some people figured out the net and we haven't. But I guess winning will solve a lot of problems. But I just think it's disappointing because I would love to see more kids get an opportunity. You asked me a great question yesterday. I still, the other day, I still think that um, we should expand the tournament because it gives more kids opportunities. Like, where everything's about our student athletes. If that is true, then I know people say, well, we're ruining the tournament. There's still going to be upsets, you know, whether you expand it or not. But it's, the, it's been the same amount since it went from 64 to 68. When it went to 68, nothing happened. It's still a great event. So why can't we add some more to it? And I think that will really help because I always say this, uh, anytime you can help the student athletes get a chance to experience something that's always better for our sport. Back right. Uh, Gary Hahn with the Wolfpack Sports Network. Kevin, of all the uh, challenges that the Wolfpack teams had to uh, face the last uh, six games, what, what are you the proudest of in terms of being able to overcome those challenges? Well, I think the biggest thing I'm proud of is our guys was were was able to block out any distractions. You know, we the way we finished our season and it was really tough. We we lost four games in a row. And it would have been easy for those guys to say, Man, it's just not our, our season and pack it in and you know, um when we were winning those games at the ACC we were also on spring break and it was warm in D C and so our guys could have said, Man, we lose, we can go home, we can go on spring break. I think, I think the mere fact that we were able to lock in, focus, uh, not worry about all the distractions and, and win those five games and then go into the NCAA with a lot of momentum and, and obviously pull off this, it says a lot about the character of the guys that's in that locker room. 
Front right. Coach, it looks like you were playing through the bigs last night. Obviously, big games from Burns and Middlebrooks. Different team in Oakland. Have you had an opportunity to take a look and see what scheme uh, is going to probably be best to attack the uh, Golden Grizzlies? You know, Oakland's unique, and I think that's what makes them special. Um, you know, they've got shooters. They've got inside presence. You know, they've got post guys. They've got wings that can play. And so when you get a team like that, you got to do a good job of defending them. So we, I think we have to defend them at all five positions. They don't have a weakness in their positions. But also what makes them different is, you know, they play a matchup zone, and you're not, you're not used to seeing that all the time. And with one or two days of prep, it's always tough to have that. And so I, I think, you know, our, our preparation is sometimes you can go into a, a game and just prepare for one side, you know, offensively or, or, or on the other side of a defensively. Uh, what makes them tough is that, unfortunately, nobody played us a matchup zone the entire year. And so we have, you know, a day and a half, not even that, because you can't even really take the court like that to try to figure out how to be able to score the basketball. So, you know, offensively, we got to have a game plan, but we also got to have one defensively also. Right aisle. Yeah, Rob McLam with Inside Pack Sports. Kevin, you have a, basically everybody that plays other than Breon is a transfer. And so that's going to – sometimes it's going to take time. If you look – I don't want to imply there will be more five games and five-day winners as time goes by, but do you think there will be more teams in the coming years with the portal where in late February, early March, they start to find it and then go on a run as you guys have? Well, I do think – I think it's going to take a little longer than people think. I want you to think about it, and I always concentrate on our league. Our league is so good that we lose a bulk of our, our players to the NBA. The guys who don't play end up transferring. And so most of our teams at the beginning of the year look different. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, sometimes our non-conference is not the best because we got so many new people. Uh, but to get back to your question, I do think that it takes a lot longer than people expect for transfers to come together. And you could see, you know, late January, February pushes where guys are good. Uh, my team last year, we were a little bit uh, advanced because we had a chance to take a foreign trip. We went to Bahamas and we got those 10 days of extra practices and we were able to play two games. And so that helped this group. We didn't have that, that, that group. We didn't have that with this group. And so a lot of times uh, it's gonna take some time and it just depends on how many veterans you got back and what their role was when they were on that team previously. Right middle. You see what I say today, obviously you guys are still in this, so it's a, kind of a different situation for you, but there's been a lot of chatter about the transfer portal being open right after Selection Sunday, uh, and you guys are going to have to replace some of these guys that are helping you do this right now. How do you kind of balance uh, looking at who's there? How many guys do you kind of dedicate to that, and what are your thoughts on when this is open? Yeah, I, man, that's a, that's a great question. Um, thank you for that. Because I, it, it's been a, as a guy who loves to recruit, it has been a major challenge to balance getting ready for a great Oakland team and then obviously trying to figure out, you know, who can we go after in the transfer portal. And I wish um, someone is listening that, you know, we would push those dates back or change the dates and stuff like that because it's not really, in my opinion, it's not fair to the teams who have earned the right to play in the NCAA or the NIT. And then, you know, some teams that are not playing, they have the complete advantage to be able to recruit and you don't. And so I wish they would, you know, completely look at that. And uh, if there was a way that they could, you know, tinker with that and change it a little bit, because, you know, one of the things I sent to my staff today, I'm so used to playing the next day. I forgot after we won the game last night, I thought we played today. I was like, we played five straight days. so. I consider this a day off, even though it's not a day off. And I sent my te my staff a text and said, hey, hey, if you guys need, let's get on the phone with some guys who are in the transfer portal so we can try to, you know, get ahead of some of these things. But it's a complete disadvantage that we're in. Right, Isle. Yeah, you, uh, just a moment ago you mentioned last year's team. I'm glad you did that because they're the ones that kind of lifted you up from where it was the year before. In do you feel like a sense of gratitude to like Terquavion, for example? He stuck it out, chose not to leave it in its worst place, 
and now you have this. Is this season sort of an extension of that decision and those guys of what they did last year? Well, absolutely. Um, m momentum. You know, guys like Quavion Smith, who who I love, who, you know, committed to me when he was 15 years old and stuck around the program after we didn't have that great year. And, you know, to get a guy like Jock, uh, Jockel Joyner to come into the program and, you know, people forget how good those two guys were. We lost 34 points from those guys and a lot of leadership and everything else. But, you know, when we win a championship like we did this year, those guys were so important to us winning because they gave us momentum. And, you know, the guy like DJ Burns comes in and has a, you know, comes back as another year and Casey Morsell, and we were able to add something to it. But the guys from the year before laid a great foundation to get us right back on track. Back right. Uh, Billy Witz with the New York Times. Uh, I have a couple of uh, kind of NIL uh, questions for you. Did, is there uh, with is there anything unique that uh, that um, your collective does? And I'm just wondering if you can ex you know that or, or or if it's just something uh, like where you're just copying best practices or uh, you know that's out there. And then also. How does it how does it work between say the football program and your program of figuring out kind of like you know there's only a fixed amount of money of like where it goes and some schools I know like Arizona where they're just separated but um, yeah can you I guess elaborate on those yeah, things? yeah I, I our collective one pack uh, does a tremendous job and here's why I say that um, we're not. I don't have a lot of contact with them like that. It's completely kind of separate of us, um, you know, probably because of NC State, probably because of the state of North Carolina. So I think every state has something different uh, in our situation. We don't have a lot of contact with them. But what I do love about them is our guys during the time when they're not, you know, in class or basketball-wise, they have those guys out in the community, the Boys and Girls Club. They have them at Children's Hospital. They have them doing a lot of great things. I think that kind of separates us from a lot of people. Now, not saying that other people don't do that, um, but they're very involved. As as far as the um, you know dividing the money, I don't really know how they work. Um, I just know at NC State um, we need – you know, our, our folks who are, you know, a, a mass collection of people to be able to provide money um, to help with our student athletes. And I'm a fan of NIL because, um, you know, I, I remember back in the day when, when, you know, kids were going to bed hungry, didn't have any money, and, and they were selling their jerseys at the bookstore and they never capitalized on anything else. And so I am a fan of that. But, but I think our, 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 collect, our collective does a really good job of that part of it. I don't know how it's broke down. I wish I did. Um, if I did, I would request. I, I, like, I like to get $7 million if I could. It's a joke. Don't print that. I just want everybody to know that. But. Probably got time for a couple more front right. Uh, Coach, you said previously one of the differences between this year's team and last year's team is the depth. More guys you can count on to score and contribute. Last night, a good example with Ben Middlebrooks chipping in 21. Um, in a tournament like this in particular, where it's natural for these student athletes to have some nerves, to maybe have an off night, how vital is that depth where it's not one guy having to carry the load game in, game out? Well, depth can be looked at it in a different way. Um, it's weird because uh, we built this team to have 10 guys that will be able to play, and now we're down to seven or eight that's really contributing. Last year, team had more numbers that played. But what's unique about this team is, like last year, if Tequavion Smith or Jaquel Joyner didn't lead us, then it was going to be hard for us to win. You know, I think out of the um, you know, six games that we played, you know, in the postseason, I think we at least five of them maybe, we've had a different leading score. And that, that's a good thing because it's hard to, you know, uh, focus in on one, one guy. You know, Ben was great. He did a tremendous job last night. And what was so special about last night was, you know, as Ben was scoring, DJ Burns was just the most excited guy for him. And I think that's what's made our team really special. They're really happy for the success of their teammates. Our last question right here. 
Yes, sir. Greg Campy, I just want to know your impressions of him. He's been at the same place a long time. He's coached a long time. Yep. Are those things that you would want in your life? Would you want to be somebody that coaches 40 years or spends an inordinate amount of time at the same place? I mean, just your impressions on him and how that – is that the life you would want? Well, first of all, let's just start with the obvious. He's a tremendous coach. I mean, you, you do not get the opportunity to stay anywhere for 40 years unless you know what you're doing. Um, that's not happening in today's time. Nobody stays. Nobody's going to get that opportunity because uh, – but he has done such a great job and um, probably, you know, I'll say this, probably one of the most underrated coaches, you know, in the country with what he's done. And, you know, you've seen he's, you know, put that program on the map. And, you know, I just – every, you know, two or three years you hear about – Oakland and upsetting people and you know I, I heard about him earlier this year I think it was and quote me if I'm wrong correct me if I'm wrong I think it was the Xavier win um, pretty doggone good and you know he knows what he's doing he's put together a collection of really good players and you could tell people that his players enjoy playing for him he runs a system that's really good and you know they know what they're doing thanks coach appreciate it thanks